Merry Christmas Eve. Anyways, this is the rework. Basically, when you download it from my Gumroad, it'll just come in a little, um, it'll come in a zip file called Camera Shakeify Rework, rework Pack. And in that folder, there's going to be two different files. You're going to have Simple Walk and you're going to have Camera Shakeify Rework. I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. But so um, basically, later in the video, I will show you how to make your own shakes. This is actually one of the shakes that I made in that tutorial. So how do you install the add-on? It's like any other Blender add-on. You just got to go to Blender, Edit, Preferences. We'll go Install from Disk, Add-ons. We'll go Add-ons, Install from Disk, and then we'll find the folder and then camera shakeify rework and it'll appear like this if you do find any bugs please report it to the google forms that i have linked in the preferences should mention that we're just going to save our preferences and we're going to exit out so how do you use it well it's just like normal shakeify if you want it to be so if you were to click on the camera here and we go to the camera settings it's just camera shakeify we got to click on this little plus button and there's going to be a bunch of different shakes here and I've added four more shakes to the defaults. I don't know how many there are default, but I've added four more, which is just idle, which uh, looks like this. We have walk. We have freaked out. And we have downstairs. Anyway, that's pretty much it if you want it to be but it gets interesting once you go to the end panel because if we click on the camera and we go down to camera shake if i rework and we click on reload shakes this is all of the shakes we have here if you don't like a shake let's say i don't like the zeke 2d i don't like any of the 2d ones i can just click on the little x and that'll delete them from the add-on now if you go to the rework and you click here it doesn't look like they're deleted. That's unfortunately because I ha you have to reload Blender every time you make a change. So I have to go into Blender. I have to exit out of Blender when I make a change, which includes adding a shake or removing one. So we go back in here. We click on the shake. Or we go to the camera. Um, we click on the plus button. And now all of the 2D camera shakes are gone. That's kind of the one main faulty bit about this whole thing is the fact that you have to reload Blender in order to, for Shakeify to update, which sucks, but I'm not good at Python, so I can't fix it. Unless if someone wants to volunteer and give me a fix for that, I would love it and I would praise you. I'd put you in the, in the credits, but okay. We have all this. How do we import the, 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 the walk that's included? Conveniently, it's the import shake button. You can just click on it and we'll go to the folder that I have, which is just simple walk. You click on it and you click import shake. Once we do that, it'll appear here. It won't appear in the add-on. Again, you have to reload Blender. I'm sorry, but conveniently you can import multiple individual shakes and then reload it and they'll all appear. So you don't have to do it every single time you add a new shake. That's just to let you know. So in the simple walk, the simple walks, literally just a simple walk. It's just this. I recorded the camera movement earlier today. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. The only thing that's not self-explanatory is exporting your own shakes, making your own. So the best way that I know how to do that is to get onto your phone and um, I have an iPhone, which means I use CamTrack AR. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of Android alternative, but you just have to get some sort of cam movement, or I guess you could animate it yourself, but I don't know, cam, cam tracking is way easier. But I'm, I'm gonna put you onto my phone and show you how that works. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, just kind of scan for CamTrack AR, just so then we can get some realistic camera movement from the, from the get-go. So I'm just walking around, scanning everything, trying to make it as polished as possible in the scan so then we can make sure we get everything and it's not like a glitchy recording. I'll set the phone. Okay, get this here. Let's scan a little bit more. Oh, hey puppies. Um, and once we're done with that, we're gonna go back over here and we're just gonna begin the recording. files and from there what we want to do is we want to um, take the Python file we want to take the Python file let me select them gotta get the Python and the HFCS and we're gonna share them and I'm gonna put them in my Google Drive just so then I can access them on my computer 
Let me change the drive here. Me, ne never mind, I don't want that. And then I'll just upload them. Let me try that again. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna download the HitFilm importer and it'll give us a little warning. Just click download anyway. And we're gonna also download the HFCS file. Okay, once we're in Blender, we're gonna go to edit preferences. We're gonna go to install from disk and we're just gonna install the HitFilm importer, which will look like this. And I already have my add-on installed, so I don't have to do that. So we're just gonna go into our uh, little blend file. And we're gonna go to file import hit film ar tracking data and we're gonna find the hfcs file that we just downloaded which will be right here it's gonna look like this i'm gonna actually get rid of everything else because we need to do that okay so in this animation there's a couple things that we need to fix before we do any looping or converting it to a shake or putting it back at world origin we have first of all if we were to turn on motion paths right here we're gonna calculate motion paths it's in the object tab in the properties panel we can see that it moves forward and shakes don't do that believe it or not shakes don't move the camera for you I mean they kind of do but you, you get what I mean so we want to fix this kind of a linear X movement and that's not that hard to do what we first want to do before we do anything is we just want to we can see that in our animation we kind of speed up so we want to go to a point in our animation where we kind of are already moving forward and we're gonna we're gonna kind of pick this location right here we're just gonna delete the keyframes and we'll bring these to zero all right so before we do anything what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on snapping well snapping's already on but we're gonna turn on absolute time snap so then these keyframes get snapped to each frame instead of being snapped to kind of a pseudo frame and we're gonna open up this little object transform and we're gonna hide all of them except for X and we're going to turn off all of them except for X which will basically just allow us to see the pure X movement we're gonna update the path again and we can see that it's purely just X so what we're gonna do is since we have absolute time snap on if we were to rotate it it's going to be fine we have to turn what the hell oh oh uh, right, 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 right. sorry there's one more thing we have to do this right here is our focal length because for some reason cam track ar on my phone records focal length which i guess is realistic but you can't do that in a shake so we're just going to click on this we're going to click l and then we're just going to delete it we're going to obliterate it i'm going to turn on normalize so then it's easier to tell what's happening and i'm going to select all of these x by just clicking a on the keyboard and i'm going to rotate it till the x the end of the x kind of looks like it matches with the end or the beginning so we can see this kind of glitchy mess which you don't have to worry about that's kind of that's what's going to happen either way and we're going to try to match it up to the grid line so we can see that if i were to move it a little higher that about loops we'll bring this to the front right here to this first one keyframe and to fix this kind of glitchy mess i'm just going to right click and change handle type to automatic and bam we got our x fixed and it should loop in place so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go to the tail end of this and we're going to change the um, frame range to the end to be right there so we can actually preview the loop. And look at that. It loops perfectly. Amazing. We only have to do that one, two, three, six more times. Seven, uh, five. It's not that hard. It's just repetitive. A friend of mine's probably going to be working on a tool that can do that for you. So this tutorial might become obsolete. So we're going to do the same thing that we just did to the X. We're going to take this Y right here. And we're going to rotate it till the end is matches the beginning, at least in the Y position. Okay, we're going to try to match this up best we can. And we're go now going to bring this to the beginning of frame one we're going to select it all and we're going to handle type automatic and bam now the y loops perfect we're going to do that for the z now we can see that get, that kind of goes woo 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 another thing to keep in mind when it comes to looping animations is we want the end to kind of seem like it would transition so when it goes up and then it goes down we want the beginning to go down and then back to whatever it goes before going up at the end and back down and so what we're going to do is we're going to select it all. We're going to do the rotation again. This one's really, really bad. This is a pretty bad animation. We can't rotate it to have it work because we have frames kind of overlapping and you can't do that with frames. So what are we going to do? Well, conveniently, we have something called proportional editing. Now, proportional editing, it's not that hard. All we have to do is if we move our little header to the beginning of this animation and we move down if we actually um kind of scroll on our bar we can see that it's moving all of the nearest keyframes 
in kind of a linear way. So we're going to kind of bring this down to about where this is. One way we can do this is just kind of clicking G while we're hovering right next to it so we can match it up pretty closely. Bang, that should be perfect. So we're going to bring in the tail end. We're just going to make sure that this loops correctly. Look at that. That looks pretty good. All right. Now, if this end doesn't touch this um, frame it, frame range end, don't worry. We can fix that at the end. So now we're going to do that for the X this time. Bring this in, kind of scale it along this way. And we have that same issue. So we can take this. We'll move it down to about the same. Again, uh, one thing that I should mention is if we go to view and we go to cursor Y, we can actually just kind of move this line. So it's easier to figure out whether they are in the same Y. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So we can see that it escapes here. We don't have to worry about that right now. We'll go the Y. We're going to do this again, but then realize that it's too jagged. So we're going to do the same thing we did. This may be the best way to do it, honestly. We're going to move it up, bring our cursor down so we can line it up. Wow. We did that kind of first try. We'll bring it a little bit above. So we're going to try to get it. Perfect. Okay, and then one more time for the Z, you, your location. We'll bring this back here. Okay, now if we were to do this again, it's going to have that same little weird glitch. I don't know what's happening here. It's kind of weird. We'll fix that. Because of the method at the end, you can delete any weird keyframes and it'll all fix in the end whether you delete those keyframes or not. We just want to line it up. All right. Perfect. Now we have a pretty well looping animation, but we have these kind of tail ends that are escaping or not even hitting this um, frame range. So what we can do is we can just go and we're going to set our little um, pivot point to be the 2D cursor. From here, we're going to go to one. We're going to go to one and we're just going to go through all of these and we're going to make sure that these match up. So let's go to Y now. Y is one keyframe off. So we can just kind of scale it along the X. Bam, now it fits. Next, we got the Z and Z is pretty bad. So we can just scale it along the X. If we have any weirdness, we can go into here, change handle type to automatic and that should fix all the weirdness. We go to X right here. It escapes the frame range so we'll just kind of bring it back perfect frame range automatic y we'll do the same thing and keep in mind that when you're scaling it you do want to only scale on the x just by doing sx you probably know this automatic and then z it escapes so i'll also de delete that and we'll just kind of bring that back in frame range automatic all right so now our animation loop for the entirety of the animation doesn't look that bad. The beginning kind of starts a little slow, but that's not, that's a fine, that's a fine. <laughs> I accidentally did that in Italian voice. Okay. So now we have all of this location working, but we want, we can't actually, if we were to go into here and we were to go to our Shakeify, what that's going to do is it's basically when we save it, it's not going to be working correctly because look at how far away it is from the origin. This add-on works specifically on the idea of the fact that the camera is at the origin. It can't be up here and it's not going to fix itself. It, If you were to t um, turn this into a shake and put it on a camera, it's going to offset it as if the camera was the origin. It's going to move it all the way over here. We don't want that. So how do we move it to the origin? Well, there's a really simple way to do it. All we have to do is we're just going to add an empty. We're going to bring it to kind of like the middle of all of these keyframes in a way. We've got to do that for the X and the Y. So bring that here. We're going to kind of put that there and we're going to parent the camera to the empty. So control P object from there. We're going to take the empty and we're just going to set all of this location data to be zero. It also has to be facing down. So what we'll do is we'll just rotate the Y to be 90 and we'll calculate the, uh, we'll update all the paths. So now we can see that it's all based around the world origin. You still have one more step and that's just basically clicking on the camera and we're going to go to object animation, bake action, and we're going to turn on visual keying, clear parents and overwrite current action. Then click. Okay. What that'll do is that'll offset all of the position keyframes and rotation keyframes to be from this point in space. So now we can delete the empty and bam. Now we have our shake pointing in the right direction for it to be exported. To export it, it's not that hard. All we have to do is just go to export shake. We're gonna select our camera here. I should probably make it where the camera is actually just the one you're selecting. We're gonna name it just um phone walk. Um, I don't know what this value is. What is this? Shake author. I should probably write that down. I'm sorry. We'll just do my name. We'll set the frame range. So the frame range is um 
1 to uh, 382 so we'll set that here affects the position and the rotation and we'll export it and we'll just call this um simple walk bam we've just exported our shake and if we want to add it to our add-on what we'll have to do is we'll just reload the shakes and we'll go to where we saved it so where is it Okay, I got a bit carried away, but I fixed the add-on. So, um, as I was saying, all you have to do is once you click on your camera, just make sure that it's all selected, fill in the information, then click export. And we'll go to downloads, and I'll call it just simple walk. Not wimple walk, simple walk. And not fonts, what is it? Okay, once you do that, now let's just import it. So we're just going to go to import, we're going to go to downloads, and find simple walk. Fuck me. Oh! Uh the error was caused because um the function that was actually executing when you clicked the export button just wasn't getting executed i forgot to to, to execute the function there's a couple of issues but we should be good now all we have to do is just name it simple walk i'd love to do it in download and bam if we check we now have simple walk okay good so to import it all we have to do is just click import shake and it's going when you export it it's going to give you this little python file click on it import shake It'll appear here. Now, there's an issue where basically it doesn't appear in your actual Shakeify until you reload Blender. So you have to exit out of Blender. And then once you go back into it, and I'm just going to go into the default <laughs> Blender, we can click on this camera and we now have walk again. So this is the walk cycle that we just did. Look at that. It doesn't look like it loops the best, but that's just because it's where you do this. It'd be pretty difficult to tell when the loop happens. So that's basically, um, that's my Shakeify rework. I hope you guys can utilize this in all of your renders. And, um, I'm probably going to keep updating this for a while. And hopefully by the time, um, next year, there's going to be a couple different shakes that people can use. So, uh, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year. See you, everybody.